Hey guys, welcome to uh, Matt W Fishing. Thanks for stopping by the channel. I'm Matt Weta, and today's video is about something pretty funny. All right, or interesting or infuriating, depending who you are and what your what mood you're in, honestly. But uh, about a week ago, I finished uh, finished up the BFL season um, on the St. John's River. It was a two-day super. I actually missed the Toho event just because I was out of town, I believe, for one of the for the first invitational or the second invitational. Uh, it was Clarksville, I think. Uh, anyways, I didn't fish it, and so I had to do really good in this event because of the three Harris events that I'd fished. I was in 101st place in points. Just horrible. I had a 30 something, a 69th, and a 101st, or something like that. So that had me in 101st place in points. So I had to do really good in this event to jump up in points, make regionals, and uh, we might have done that, but I'll get into that later. So, anyways, I, I ran up to. Uh, St. John's River. I spent three days practicing for that event, uh, mostly because I haven't fished that much this year. Um, so I'm kind of wanting to pretty much go all in on whatever I do fish. And St. John's is the no exception. So I went down there, I uh, put three days in, and um, I had a pretty good practice. Um, I really thought that I was on some fish to honestly winning the event like it was it was really good i knew the weights wouldn't be bad they would be like decent um for at least first place um and it ended up being a 20 pound and then a 22 pound bag that took home the win by lee stalvey which congratulations again lee that was that was a good job um but i knew it, it would take some decent weight and the fish that i had found in practice i mean i thought you know, it's of course the practice curse. You have a great practice, you get all amped up for it in the day of the tournament, everything changes. Um, this was a little different. I didn't really expect anything to completely change. So the first day of practice was the best. Um, second and third were more realistic, I guess you could say. And the first day of the tournament, I thought I could just run all my best stuff at the best time and have the best shot at doing good. And it just didn't work out quite that way, but it's fine, you know, I. I salvaged an event. I even I had some pretty bad luck on the first day, but um, that's another thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that whole video series here. I'm actually all right. I'm going to do a members only channel um, on my YouTube where I'm gonna post how would I say more detailed, like full bore, like every move I make, every thought I make. Um, style YouTube video like I'm just gonna pretty much drop everything and I'll be honest the st. John's River was a it was kind of a special event of kind of what I had figured out but it was very it was very specific and uh, there was a lot to it so that's not something I just want to on you know common man YouTube but members only channel hop on there I'm gonna post the juice juice on there so if you guys want to see it, that's fine. If you don't, that's not your deal. Totally cool. I get it. Um, getting to the point. Co-angler. Um, that's the title of the video. Worst co-angler ever. Or something like that. So, second day. This is the second day of the St. John's River. I have a co-angler who fished with the person who did very well the first day. He had three bass for seven pounds. I get that, you know, your draw doesn't always guarantee your success due to styles of fishing. I totally get that. So my guy had seven and a half pounds the first day. And I mean, he was, he got paired with me and I was in like 18th place or something with 13, seven. So I need to mute this immediately, immediately. Um, So, you know, he was pretty much in a position where any fish that he caught would shoot him up and make him money. But anyways, first day, first thing in the morning, I get there. I was, as as per usual, the last person at the boat ramp on day two. I'm like the last person in there. Everyone's in the water, idling around, floating around. I get there last and I'm like, where's he at? 
text him, not call him. I think he, I don't think the call went through the first time. I called him again. Well, hey, where you at? He goes, oh, I'm right here by the MLF trailer. I'm like, all right, well, that's, that's cool, but like, I'm here. Like, we, like, I got, we got 25 minutes, which is still a decent amount of time. I don't get worried about it. But it's still like, kind of, it's kind of get moving. We got to get moving just a little bit. You know, usually if your guys, like, you expect them here in the next five minutes, you know, you're kind of sitting there ready to go throw your shit in the boat and go excuse my language um whatever i'm like it is what it is i don't care that's this is stuff that happens every day whatever pops in the boat whatever making small talk i mean everything was fine honestly we were talking throughout the day it was a great time and so the deal that i was running i will say this was very very shallow stuff and i had to troll way way up there in literally a foot and a half of water i mean my troll motor was kicking mud a lot of the time and i'll be honest guys there was a dock on either side of us we're within casting distance we're sitting in a foot and a half of water um in practice i did see a couple cruisers in that area and i did catch one off the square bill off the dock walkway in practice um but it really wasn't happening if you weren't throwing straight on the bank at the bank like I was. Which, you know, I'll admit that. And I was doing this deal in the morning. And once the sun came out, it pretty much went went to crap. So I'm standing out there. And it's like 11. Like, I'm, I'm pushing this deal. Like, I'm pushing it. And... Actually, we just pulled up to the trash dump. I gotta throw some of this stuff out. I don't know if you guys can see it. I got a bunch of crap in the back. Um, I'll get right back to you. Right back to you. All right, we back. Um, I think I was telling you guys how the deal laid out. Yeah, it was just super shallow water. Um, and where he was having to fish, which was basically the dock, uh, pretty much open water, and then you know everything else that i didn't throw to um he was not fishing in the best water i will admit that um unfortunately and i'm not i'm listen i'm pro co-angler i've had so many great co-anglers since i've been fishing i mean i can count on one hand the amount that i would never want again in my boat i've drawn a lot of great guys um some of y'all messy though. Some of y'all your rods get all sprawled out and there's tackle everywhere. But that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I'm about to get in a wreck. I'm talking crap about co anglers. But that's all right. You know, as long as you tidy up, you keep your corner how you want it, and that's fine. I don't care. Legit. But I'm fishing my deal at like 11 o'clock. And then all of a sudden, it's not here. He sits down. I'm like, okay. He's tired, you know, get it, it's hot out, whatever. And I start hearing the huffing and puffing. I'm like, okay. And then, uh, and actually, a, another competitor on a day two had come down the bank in front of me, and there was a big long dock, and he turned and went, and him and his co would fish all the way up the dock. And I would fish some of the outer edges of these docks in, on my way in and on my way out. I'd fish them pretty fast, though. Um, and then my co-angler goes, how far are we from the ramp? And the second he said that, I'm like, I know where he's going with this. And I'm like, 20, I think I said 15 miles in the video, but I think we're realistically like 20, 20 miles away from the ramp, 25. Uh, and he's like, I'm like, Why? He goes, I want to go home. I'm like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't want to stay too. Come on, man. You don't want to go home. And I'm just like, dude, this guy just fish up the dock. Here, I'm going to show the clip right here. I'm going to show the clip. You see exactly what I'm talking about. How, how far are we from the run? Uh, I don't know. 15 miles. Good. Wow. I don't even know. Huh? Good. I mean, there's a 
Oh, they were just fishing. They're gonna roll now and go hit some other stuff. So, all right, you saw that. Whatever, you know. Take me home. Sure, just you just probably throwing it out there. See if it see if it happens. See if it works. Whatever, I get it. You know, I'm not taking you home. Sorry. You up in my boat? Barring a f personal emergency, we're not going back to the ramp. Like, we're ugh, there's so much that goes into this just to be out there for those eight hours, and a lot has got to go down for me to go back to the ramp. So I'm like, whatever, I forget about it. Sit down, idle, run a couple miles down the lake, whatever, go to my next spot. And then this happens. See, we get here, you hit the wall, but I mean dead water, so I mean dead water until you finish hitting the, hitting the wall, and then we move. Not to say there's not a bass under dock. I've seen them cruising all while I'm fishing the seawall. Uh, it's all about you, bro. It's all I'm about you. I get it, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not getting in there. I hate to say it, dude. It's part of being a co-angler. It's just... Well, it's not my first rodeo, buddy. And there's some I there, there's some boaters and there's some boaters, you know. Shit. Yeah, let's leave it at that, bro. Yeah, I think I want to. I want to go home. Fuck this shit. Twenty miles from the ramp, and if I get back, I'm not gonna have enough fuel for the shelter. Like, you want to fish by yourself? It's all good, man. But I'd rather just, you know, go home and watch the football game. Well, I can't. Football. When you go home, I can't fish by myself. They won't let me go out. Well, you. That's. <laughs> that's very, very fucking well, convenient. Dude. Well, I'm sorry, but there's no co-anglers I've ever met that have ever wanted to go in early. And I fish like this all the time. I had a girl in the back of my boat all day. I don't care about anybody else, bro. I'm here. I pay money to fish a tournament, not to I watch just, you fish. I, you know? Yeah. Well, the only one watching me fish is you because you're sitting down. Pick up a rod and throw your fish. Yeah, right. It's not like I'm yeah, purposely inhibiting you from fishing. There's there's a hundred feet of dock. There's water under all underneath us. I've caught fish off of here in practice on square bills. Like I'm just not doing that right now. Because I'm trying to fucking I'm trying to get a big one. Yeah, you're doing your thing. When you're done you're doing your thing, then we move to the other place so you can do your thing. whole fucking deal's about done anyway, so we're about to go run docks here in about 30 minutes an hour. And I had eight bites yesterday off the dock, so... I mean, I'm sorry, I don't want to be an asshole, bro. I, I'm sorry, I could. I'm sorry. Never mind. I don't know. Maybe I'm frustrated. Shit. I mean, I get... No, listen. Trust me. I know this is not the most convenient thing for going, but I, I totally understand that. Totally get it. Shit's not done anyways. I haven't had a bite in an hour. There's so much, there's so much timber, man. They, what? There's so much timber. Yeah. Catch a, a half mile of timber, just work it thoroughly. This gotta be fucking fish in the Dude, timber, I, man. I tried everything in practice, I'm telling you. And I wanted to flip, lay down as much as anybody. It just wasn't happening. The dock, besides this, the dock, the dock is where it's at. We're gonna, we're gonna do that here very soon. I think this is about the point where everyone starts picking up their wooden sticks with the flames at the end. Starts getting pretty mad because not gonna lie even though that little whole deal looks like it ended in a civil matter 
I was still pissed. I'm like, dude, how do you, there is so much about that that just pisses me off. Like, all right, first off, you made it to day two. 115 guys are home or driving home. And they want to be right where you're at, most of them. They want to be right where you're sitting. I get it, the St. John's is tough. It is what it is. It's tournament fishing, like for real, like get over it. But so many people want to be where you're sitting. So many people want to have that check in their hand at the end of the day that you know you're getting guaranteed. Granted, down there in 15th place, it ain't the best check, but it's a check. It's part of the reason why you showed up, right? So, and after, literally, that was like the last, uh, you know, one of my very last stops that I was going to do on this uh, shallow water deal that I was doing, because it just, it, it's just that the sun came out, it was too hot, I'd kind of figure that out between the first two days of practice and the first day of the tournament. Was I pushing it a little bit? Yes, because that was the way that I was banking on getting a big bite. Um... If you see my practice video, you'd be like, ah, I see what you did there. I see why you stayed out there. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, but in, but in like 30 minutes, dude, we're going to be, we're going to be close to the bank. We're going to be around a lot of targets, lots of woods, docks, you know, my, my favorite bunch of docks. That's, I literally, I'm like, dude, I had eight bites fishing docks yesterday in two hours. And we're gonna be doing that in 30 minutes. Like, put a simmer down. Like, if I was gonna do that the rest of the day, do I kind of get where you're coming from? Yes, but we're still not going in. Like I said, dude, it's it's the luck of the draw. That's that is when you're a co-angler. What is the first thing thinking running through your head? Oh, who did I draw tomorrow? Hey, do you know this guy? Is he good? What's he fish like? How you know? Like you're. You're trying to figure out from your buddies who this guy is that you drew if you don't know him. And if you do know him, you're like either like, oh yeah, I got that guy. You're like, oh my God, I drew X, Y, Z. It ha hey, listen, if you if you deny that happens, you're you're a liar. That happens every single tournament. And if you you know you're, if you're kind of like a loner, you stay by yourself. You're new to the tournaments here. You're like, huh, who's this? Wonder how our day is gonna go tomorrow. Oh well, he said to throw purple worms and I got them tied on. Go to bed. Like it is what it is. But when you're a co-angler, you're like, what's my guy gonna do tomorrow? Um, you know, it runs through everyone's head. <sighs> Where else is I going with this? Um, but at the end of the day, it's how you adjust and adapt to the conditions that you have in front of you that's true i mean just because you get a boater who's a bear to fish behind does not mean you cannot catch a fish behind him or five fish behind him there's plenty of there's plenty of stories and things and anglers um i'll throw a quick story out there and i'm not don't want you guys researching and find out who it is it is what it is don't do that my co-angler either like as much of a bad day as we had like it is what it is but i'm just trying to show you what not to do um but a bunch of years ago i was fishing the regional and seminal um day one i drew this guy cool dude funny story i haven't hooked very many people in my life but i drove a number or uh, a number two kvd triple grip in his head and I got it out, no harm, no foul. He did not actually ask me to take him back to the ramp because that's actually what I thought he was gonna do that day. That person deserved me to take them back to the ramp. If you would've said, dude, take me back to the ramp, I'm bleeding out my head. I'd be like, all right, we're going back. I get it, I get it. Or the dam's right here, we can call an ambulance. It is what it is. Um, but I drew him great guy I saw him on Facebook he's won a regional since then really cool dude well the second day I draw this off to draw another co-angler 
and he's like, man, my boater yesterday, he was fishing that trolling motor on a hundred and there was solid hydro on this side of the boat and solid hydro on this side of the boat. And I couldn't cast the whole day. I caught one fish. I'm like, well, I mean, he's fishing in a direction to where his fish are. And then eventually he passes that direction. So you could throw to where he was throwing, which obviously I don't condone because you're fishing used water and you're trying to do the boaters deal and that usually never works out. Or, I mean, if it's solid hydrilla, pick up an ounce and a half. Start, just start plunking away. You might get lucky because he was frogging, he was frogging the holes in hydrilla and stuff. I might like, pick up a punch wave. But whatever. That's what I'm saying though. You know, sometimes people get put in positions and co-angling and they kind of make excuses for the day. Like again, I'm not trying to sound like a bad guy or nothing. I'm just saying in fishing, especially as a co-angler, you have to be very proactive and reactive and positive about every situation you got to get thrown at you. Because listen, I'll be honest, some of us boaters out here are freaking brutal. Like when my co-angler was saying, You're, it's all about you, buddy. It's all about you. You know what, man? After three days of practice, three day Airbnb and a hotel, two, actually two hotels, because I had to get another hotel to stay that night to fish the second day. And just the money, the time, the research, everything that I put into this tournament, yeah, it's kind of about me a little bit. Because I showed up, I put in all the work, I put in all the effort, to find these fish and make a day for me, put a day together for me. When I put my day together, my game plan, I'm sorry, but my co-angler, it does not fit in that puzzle. I'm not, I'm not like, oh, well, maybe I'll roll over here at the end of the day, let my co-angler throw out a couple stumps. I'm sorry, that's not me. Listen, if I'm the first to admit, and you can have co-anglers comment down here, I'll be out there fishing i'll throw up and i'll maybe i'll find like a little group of schoolers or something i'll throw in there hook a one or two pounder you can look at day one of gunnersville i do that i'll, I'll catch like a you know a small one and be like I, I don't need that i got you know two and a halfs in the box as my small one i don't need these ones and twos or whatever hey co-angler if you point if you aim right there and you throw your rally trap or your worm and fish it real slow you'll catch one i do that all the time Granted, if I have my bases covered, because my bases have to be covered before I start caring about your bases or, or you know, or just offering things. And there's been a lot of times in my career where I have let my boat drift the wrong way, or if I go down to re-rig, or if I go down to put a fish in the box, but co-angler takes that opportunity that he really shouldn't like one of them over the over the shoulders and lines rubbing your shoulder cast and bam they catch that key fish it happens dude it happens and like that dictates if you get a check that dictates angler of the year that dictates a tournament win and it happens dude it happens every day i hear talk to people that happens to every day what I'm basically trying to say is when you're a co-angler, you get in someone's boat, I feel like the number one objective is to learn. I mean, yeah, you're a deep, how much is a guide trip? Guide trip is four to seven hundred dollars by the time you're all said and done, depending who you go with. And if you're hiring a guide, most of the time it's just not because you're in the area and you want to fish. It's because you wanna, I mean, it's because you want to learn, man. Like if if one, if someone who's watching this video hires a guide trip, they're doing it to learn something. So, imagine getting on a boat. It's not only a guide trip, because you're getting in the boat with a boater who is there all in. He's all in. He's trying to make money. He's trying to fish the best spots in the lake. He's putting all his time, effort, research into finding the best fish on that lake. And you're getting to see it happen first thing you have you see him with all the best baits he's got making all the best moves like you see guys in their prime 
with a, you know when the coals are red you see it happening real time that's almost better than a guide trip sometimes and if you just start asking your boater questions he'll I mean speaking for me I'll tell you I'll tell you what's going on I'll tell you how I found my fish I'll tell you just about everything that's going on I want I want to see people learn but uh, you're doing that and then you have your entry fee so if you catch if you catch some fish and do good you're gonna make you're gonna make money you might win the whole tournament but uh, that's the way I would look at it as a going obviously a lot of you guys are competitive and you when you show up you want to win well listen sometimes you get drawn a boater who just doesn't put you around those fish or that position and the best thing to do in that situation is sit down and not not sit down I'm not telling you to sit down but sit there and pay attention and learn and ask questions because that's that's your best shot that's how the better co-anglers turn into great boaters because they sit there in the back of the boat they fish pay attention to what their guy's doing they're like wow hey why are you throwing that color worm whatever oh because the sun and this and the cat and that I've been in this situation 48 times and every time my color beats it you're like I'm gonna buy one this afternoon and your boater will be like go do it and see for yourself all the time I just use that as like a general example but um, hope they can find the video or the video was uh, was put there but there you go right off the corner of the dock yeah oh shit Thanks. Oh, there goes that chatter bait. Damn, that's the fucking best one I've ever used. Too. Now that's half your weight from yesterday. Huh? That's half your weight of yesterday. That one fit. Yeah. caught a fish we get to like the second spot and he catches the dang three two three three something like that that's almost half his weight from the day before he had seven pounds on three fish i'm like dude i'm like you just you just did something and um you know he's 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 like all cool about it now obviously you know he's catching fish um and then we start jumping a couple of spots boom 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 and we're staying we're staying on the dock deal we're staying shallow boom boom and uh i get to the dock where i caught my last fish on the first day literally i think this fish is the one that got me in the cut like it's got a little bit of significance to me i get i get to the dock i'm pitching my bait under there i get hung up i break it off i'm about 40 feet from the dock and there's a dock 60 feet behind me happens I hit that dog while you were tying that. What's that? No love. I'm not giving any love for you, bro. Yeah. Oh, to fish the dock? You can throw to the one behind you.
Yep. He was mad that I sat down to retie and left the boat straight off my bow and left the boat power pole down, which I already was, and just didn't give it to him to fish. Like, just broke off that dock. Hang on, let me spin the boat, power pole down. Just, like, I'm sorry. Like, you may have been with some boaters that have done that, but I'm just not going to just give you the dock that I'm trying to fish that I literally broke off so I wouldn't go in there and disturb it. Listen, if I wanted to give you the dock to fish, I would have gone in there, tick, 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 got my bait out, and turned the boat and let you have at it, like straight up. But if I wanted my shot to throw back in there and catch a fish, I did what I did and I broke it off, sat down, retied my whole deal, my whole deal and stood up and fish. And he's like, you're not gonna let me fish the dock? I'm like, what do you think this is? Like, I'm sorry. Like, what do you think this is? And then he's like, I'm not getting any love from you, man. I'm like, well, at this point, you're not getting any love from me. You wanna go in early. You're telling me I'm a selfish boater. Um, you're just telling me there's boaters and then there's boaters. I don't even know what that means, but I guess I'm the boater because that's one of the one of the two options available. So I guess I'm one of them. Um, I don't know. Oh, I, I don't know if I could, if I even got this clip in here. I'll drop it right now if I do. I go to throw my, you know, that lovely eighteen dollar jackhammer, and his tips like way out forward, and I go, whoosh, and it just. Whoosh, 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 he need to slice my chatterbait right off. I'm like, this is after this is after he gave me hell, and I'm just like, love it. Oh, oh. was that you? Yeah. You you lose it? Yeah, I broke off. It's all good. Nice over there. Hold it tight. Good. and they're just like dude you handled that 10 times better than I would have everyone's like I would have made that guy freaking swim I would have dropped them off at the bridge like I, I got the whole gamut um, but I mean, I mean no hard feelings towards the guy either like whatever like I hope I don't ever draw him again period but um, you know it is what it is that's just a that is just a how to not to do it how to not co-angle, 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 I don't know, but uh, it's not how you do it, it's not how you do it, so, um, thanks for tuning in guys, thanks for watching the video, um, I know I've been kind of spaced out between videos, you know, it is what it is, got a lot going on right now, and kind of doing a couple things, but um, one thing though, I am making a members only channel. I said that earlier, I'm making a members only channel. Um, and I'm gonna put the entire St. John series on there. And the reason is, I was doing something that is pretty special. And it's not just something I just wanna, you know, give out. If I'm being straight, straight up and honest with you guys. Um, if you really wanna know about it, Log into the members channel, members only. Um, but here's the thing: it's just not going to be just the St. John stuff. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do podcasts. I guess could you call it a podcast or or a vlog? I don't know. I'm gonna sit in front of the camera and talk about fishing, and you guys can chime in with your uh, with your requests and 
uh, comments, whatever, and I'll talk about whatever. Like, I'll talk about whatever. So I'll let you guys in on a little deal. Next year for the tournaments, actually starting this fall uh, for Lake Eufaula, if I get in. If I get in. Um, because we finished 54th on points. They take the top 45. But people in that top 45 don't always want to go. So they call down the list and they just keep going down until they have their 45 um, spots filled. And they have to match it up with co-anglers. So I'm like I'm like right there. It's it's literally we'll find out next week. But it is what it is. But next big multi-day tournament, I'm gonna start a new style of series where I'm going to incorporate a couple of other people into it. Um, and it's going to kind of show everything, show a little bit before the tournament, a little bit on the road, the practice, the nights of practice, the mornings, tournaments, the, the whole, the whole deal. We're going to make it like a fun, fun series to watch where it pretty much covers all the bullet points of every tournament. And on my members only channel, I'm gonna go more in depth into more of a, I guess you could call it serious tournament um, minded stuff. Like it's gonna be, this is the first day of practice. This is what I'm thinking about doing. This is where I'm starting. This is why I'm starting here. This is the way I'm going. This is why I'm going this way. This is why I picked this rod. I like the, the whole the whole deal. Thanks for watching, guys, and it's been a pleasure. And remember, there's boaters, and then there's motors. <laughs>